My name is Lisa. I like living in Namibia because Namibia is beautiful. There are all the animals and plants. There are some people who want to kill animals like the lions and cheetahs. I like to teach them. There are not many left. A hundred years ago, we had somewhere in the region of 100,000 cheetahs in the world. Today, the number stands at just 7,100. And these are flagship species. As they disappear, they represent the disappearance of a huge chunk of the biodiversity that goes with them. Biodiversity is what supports all the things that we need as humans, and yet it's disappearing much faster than any of us realize. One way that we've started approaching monitoring of endangered species is looking at their footprints. Yeah, look, I think we've got something here. That's cheetah, definitely. Oh, yeah. We've learned from working with indigenous trackers over many years in Africa that we can use footprints to identify species, age class, individuals, and sex. Do you have any, any thoughts about whether it's male or female? What do you think? It's not so big. Right. It means that it's a female. Right. So it's interesting that our algorithm is picking up <laughs> some of the things that you're doing in your yeah. mind, right? We came up with a mathematical model, and this is where SAS comes in, starting with importing images, and then we use those right, yeah. to derive the metrics, which then allows us to do the analysis. We're depending on data and analytics to protect these animals, and now we're beginning crowdsourcing from around the world. So ordinary people who wouldn't necessarily be able to dart a rhino, but they can take an image of a footprint. We've got data coming in from everywhere, too many data for us to manage traditionally, and that's really where artificial intelligence comes in. The big question is, can artificial intelligence do what indigenous trackers can do? When we see an indigenous tracker look at a footprint, we realize there's a huge gulf between that and what machine intelligence is currently able to do. It's just millions of years of evolution that have allowed us to be able to identify these patterns. And it's a big challenge right. in image processing. Mm -hmm. still, yeah. You know, identifying footprints is a very tedious process to be able to sort and classify them. So to be able to take that one task that's a repetitive task and automate it seemed like a natural fit for an AI solution. And it required a lot of expertise and insight from Zoe and Sky to help us train the computer to categorize the footprints the same way a human tracker would. So essentially what the heat map is attempting to do is to pick up those edges. This heat map is kind of visualizing what our deep learning model is looking at and just thinking that part of images is important to distinguish it's a cheetah print or a tiger print. The red section is a bit that's actually standing out as representing the footprint. Yeah, like because we are predicting the footprint. Is. So we overlay the Getting 100% accuracy in this project is very challenging, but we'll get there. For this one, we need more data, and we need more scientists to contribute to this project so that we can really solve this problem. I'm excited about the potential of artificial intelligence because I think that one of the hugest challenges we face is how to protect our planet, our ecosystem. And the way that we can solve it is by bringing in data from all parts of the world in a, a hugely magnified scale, much, much more than we have at the present. These data have incredible value in conservation. If we don't know where the animals are and how many there are, we can't begin to do things like working out where animals should be protected, looking at animal-human conflict. These are all global conservation questions that conservation biologists all over the world need answers to. I think we exist in a world today trying to use artificial intelligence. And our challenge is how to harness this in order to answer some of the most fundamental questions and create an environment where there's room for us and all the rest of the species in this world.